Nearstream is a brand that I wasn't really familiar with when they reached out to me asking me if I'd like to check out one of their products. They seem to be known for these all-in-one streaming cameras, which actually look quite interesting. But they asked me if I wanted to check out their new CCD30 capture card, boasting 4K capabilities, 60 frames per second, and even HDR support. So I had to check it out. Let's take a look at it. So when you get it and uh, have a look at the box, I'll be honest, it leaves a little bit to be desired. It's not the best boxing setup. Mine came a little bit bashed up as well. And it doesn't exactly scream premium, if you know what I mean. When you touch the box, it just kind of feels thin and whatever. But it's a box at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter. Inside that box, however, you will find an HDMI cable to use to connect it to a device. You will need two, but they include one. And you'll also find a USB cable, which is a USB-C cable. It's also got an adapter built onto the end to be able to connect it to USB type A devices. And then along with that, you get the capture card itself which is quite small quite dainty it's not very heavy to be honest it's made entirely of plastic but i think they probably all are but yeah it feels nice it's decent enough and ultimately it's about what it can do it's a capture card right it doesn't need to be pretty or exciting to look at can it do what it says it can when you look around the card you'll see that there's the hdmi out on one side that's what you'll connect up to your monitor then you have hdmi in on one of the ends that's what you'll connect your device to whether it's a console a pc a camera whatever you want to capture the opposite end from that will have the usb c output that's what you'll connect to the the machine that you're capturing on whether it be mac or pc compatible with both and then finally on the other long side you have the analog audio input and output it does function as a capture card and that does mean you can input a microphone into that if you want to get voice chat back into a console or something like the elgato chat link kind of style stuff you can do that too so let's have a look at the specs that they claim on here it's usb 3.1 so that will do 10 gigabits per second transfer it's plug and play so you should be able to just plug it straight in by usb and not have to install any drivers or anything the usb 3.1 speed offers ultra low latency and then it can capture and pass through 4K 60 frames per second game footage. On top of that, we'll also do HDR pass through and HDR capture as well as the normal SDR. So let's put it to the test and see if those claims are all true. So first up, plug and play. Literally, you plug it in. I've tried it on PC and Mac. You plug it in, it recognizes it as like a UBC video capture device. And in OBS, you go straight in, add a device, add a capture device choose the near stream capture device and it works straight away. USB 3.1 and ultra low latency works too. I will note that the very first time I used it, I had a bit of trouble getting 4K 60 out of this capture card, but I was connected by USB type A with the adapter into a dock. And I don't think the dock was allowing it to have full speed. So I plugged it in by USB-C directly into my MacBook and instantly it came back up 60 frames per second 4K. So it does that. And as far as latency goes, latency is great. You can see from the footage on the screen right now, the bottom screen is the pass through directly from the PC into my monitor. That's going through the capture card straight to the pass through. And the screen on the top is a full screen output from OBS on the Mac, which is capturing that PC footage through the capture card. When I paused this footage and zoomed in and compared the time delay on both, it's, it's about a tenth of a second, right? It's, it's barely anything. I guess that's 100 milliseconds ish and like always i would never recommend gaming on the preview screen coming from the capture card you really do want to use pass through but i think in this case in a non-competitive environment you could probably do so if you really wanted to ultimately the most important thing here for me in the low latency aspect is that you're not going to get any kind of noticeable audio desync between your audio inputs and the video on screen. So that amount of time is perfectly fine. So yeah, low latency, I agree. 4K 60 frames per second, that definitely works as well. As I said, at first I had a little bit of an issue getting 60 frames per second. It was only giving me 30, but when I plugged it direct, so when you're using this, plug it directly into your PC or your Mac, whatever you're trying to capture into. Don't go through any hubs or dongles or anything like that. But you can see on screen at the moment, there's some footage captured in 4k 60 frames per second i was playing these games in 4k on my pc capturing them on my macbook using the capture card and i think we have to say that the, the footage looks really good right like i played a few different games i wanted to try and show a few different styles of games from sort of slightly more realism type ones i guess to something that was a bit more bright and cartoony and all of this footage was captured on my mac using the highest quality prores codec that's available in obs so it's very very high bitrate footage that you're looking at it's going through youtube and everything as well so it's going to be compressed but i wanted to give it the best chance to show you the absolute best quality you can get from this capture card finally here's a clip which is one of those sort of 4k hdr tech demo kind of videos that you find on youtube and while this video is in sdr it's not hdr i thought the quality of that footage was a really good way to show just how high quality 
the capture can be from this card when you've got a really high quality input going into it. It looks really nice, right? Considering that's going from a PC into a capture card and being captured in OBS, super high quality footage. Quick note on the HDR, SDR thing. They say it can do HDR capture and they say it can do HDR pass through and I've tested both and you can do both. I can't show that to you because this is an SDR video that I'm recording here. I don't have the workflow to be able to produce HDR content, unfortunately. But uh, if you trust me, I've tried it, it works. A big question a lot of PC players are probably gonna be having right now or anybody who's got like, who uses like a monitor rather than a TV to play their games on is can it do 1440p? Absolutely, it can. So it can capture footage in 1440p at 60 frames per second, which is great. But more importantly, as I found out, I have a 144 hertz 1440p monitor, which is what I play games on, and it will do pass through at the full 144 hertz as well. So you can have absolutely no compromises when you're playing your game on your monitor. You can get the full 1440p 144 hertz while capturing at 1440p 60 hertz to send out to a stream or capture video footage, whatever you want to do. That makes this a really good capture card for people who are doing like dual PC setups or something like that because, because a lot of capture cards I've tried, while they will pass through 1440p, they won't do any more than 60 hertz. Or in some situations, some of the cards I've tried won't even pass through 1440p, so I've ended up having to play 1080p on my monitor, which doesn't look great at all when you're sitting with your face right in front of it, right? So yeah, 1440p, awesome does everything I needed to do so far. So what about if you want to use it for a camera, right? Well, this footage here of this guy with the really, really cool moves was captured through this capture card from my Sony ZV E10 camera, which is what I use to record all my videos. So the quality is probably not going to be quite as nice as straight out of camera. However, you will see that it's very good high quality footage. And with the low latency, I don't think you'll have any trouble with audio sync, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, works with a camera. So it all looks great. Hopefully if YouTube's compression and all that sort of stuff hasn't ruined the footage, we can all agree the footage looks really, really good, right? So one thing I do want to mention talking about compression and YouTube and stuff like that is last time I reviewed a capture card, I had a hundred people saying I'm streaming to Twitch and it doesn't look anything as good as the footage that you showed on your YouTube video. That's Twitch's fault, right? Twitch imposes a 6,000 kilobits per second bitrate limit when you're streaming to Twitch. That ProRes footage that I've just been captured is 220,000 bitrate. So that's ridiculously overkill. You don't need that much, especially if you're using AV1 or HEBC or something. Again, a lot of people can't do that on Twitch still at the moment. But what you see here is footage of me using this capture card, streaming it through Twitch at 6,000 kilobits per second. So this is what you can expect to get if you're streaming on Twitch. And to be quite honest, whatever capture card you've got, by the time it goes through Twitch at 6,000 kilobits per second, there's not really gonna be much difference. If you're streaming to YouTube, however, the bitrate limit is much higher. And if you're capturing footage to like edit and upload, then you're gonna get the absolute best out of this capture card by doing that rather than streaming. It's just the limit of live streaming. So with that out of the way, I make it sound like I don't want you to ask me questions in the comments. Please do, I'd love to hear if you've got any issues or questions or wanna know more about it. Did I miss something? Do let me know. But ultimately, I'm really impressed with this capture card. So for the price of it, which I think is about 120 odd pound on Amazon right now in the UK, don't know about international pricing, but for a 4K 60 FPS HDR capture card, I think that price is about right for what you're getting for it. It's comparable and maybe a little bit less than some of the other more well-known brands to get an equal capture card. Like with a lot of other capture cards around that price, you're only gonna get 30 FPS at 4K. So very impressed, near stream, really good job, really happy with this. I will actually be using this. Because I can do 1440p at 144 hertz pass through into my monitor, this is gonna be my main capture card that I now use to stream. I, I stream on Twitch, go check it out if you wanna check it out. It's not the most regular of occurrences, but I do do it. And when I do so, I use a dual system setup. So I stream, I let my Mac do all the streaming part and my PC does all the game playing part. So having a capture card that can pass through 144 hertz is absolutely awesome for me. So this capture card is actually gonna be an ongoing piece of hardware that I use going forward in the future. Very happy with it, can't complain at all. So big thanks to Nearstream for sending it over and letting me check it out, I do appreciate it. And thanks to all you guys for watching. I appreciate you even more. So take care people and I'll see you really soon.